Ever since the pandemic started, I have received this question a lot. The question is, what is my take on watches with radium dials and hands? I'm unsure if it is because people suddenly have more time to watch video during the lockdown and have learned that some vintage watches carry radium material and now they're freaking out. So I thought maybe instead of replying an essay to this question all the time, I should make a video about it and you can decide from there. Without further ado, let's begin this video. Hi guys and welcome to a new video with me, the Omega Enthusiast. Before I dive into the conclusion, I want to point out that I am no nuclear scientist, like anyone else who have been creating video on this topic. However, I have been repairing vintage watches for over two decades and own a Geiger reader and a radon gas detector, which is essential to have as a watchmaker. I get my health checked yearly and the result is always perfect and my workshop is well ventilated. I'm sure you guys have heard about the Radium Girls. If you have not, you can Google them up or watch the drama streaming on Netflix based on this event. I warn you, it could be pretty disturbing for some viewers. Anyhow, these girls were licking their brushes every day at work painting clock dials. So the first thing I want to point out is that these girls have no clue how dangerous radium is, and the amount of open radon surrounding them is immense. This event took place in the early 1900s, so the work environment did not have good ventilation either, and during the winter months, windows were closed. So if you put some thoughts in your head, you will come up with several factors that cause these girls to get radium poison. Firstly, the radon reading must be over the roof with the mass amount of exposed radium substances around. Secondly, depending on what clock dial they are painting, the larger the dial, the more radium will require. So think about it, one hour indexes painted alone probably has enough radium paste to paint tens or hundreds of watch dial. That can be pretty scary, especially in the open without any protective cover. That takes me to the third point about these radium girls, which is the amount of radium they intake by licking the brushes daily. They probably lick on the brushes after every brush to keep the tip pointy. I don't know how long the work shift is day to day, but I would assume the amount of radium intake per day is equivalent to painting a lot of watch dials. So don't forget that these girls' body actually glow in the dark, which is again pretty darn scary to think about it. And you can't blame these girls for working in such a dangerous environment, as they were lied about how safe radium is. After learning about the radium girls and watching a few videos about watches containing radium substances, I have decided to conduct a few tests of my own. Don't forget that I also sell vintage watches, so when my client asks me about this topic, I can give them a firm answer rather than an assumption. But more importantly, I am a watchmaker who restores vintage watches full time, so I am exposed to watches with radium day to day. So I need to understand and protect my health while working on these watches. Sounds scary so far, right? But as I continue this video, you will feel relief at the end. There are things that I think it is important for you guys to know. Number one, vintage watches that carry radium luminous paste ended in 1962. That is the trans transitional year from radium to tritium dial. So a timepiece dating to 1962 that takes luminous paste may be made of radium or tritium substances. You won't be able to tell until you test it under a Geiger reader. Number two, radium is dangerous if you inhale directly at it without any protective cover, such as a watch crystal, and intake some of the particle into your body. But more importantly is that radium releases radon gas into the air. So radon gas is what we cannot see and can affect our health. Even with the watch crystal on the watch, a small amount of radon can still penetrate through the crystal. And this is why I needed to conduct a test to find out how dangerous it is. That said, do not confuse yourself when discussing this topic regarding radium. For example, when you consume radium substances on a watch dial, that would be many times more dangerous than exposure to radon gas in the air from one watch. 
Many homes across North America are affected by radon gas, where certain areas have above 15% of the dangerous level, which is above 200 becquerel per cubic meters, or BQ slash M3. But the majority of people do not know about this issue. Consuming radium substances can cause many internal issues, like what happened to the radium girls. But being surrounded by an environment with a high level of radon gas only can cause lung cancer. So I pulled out this chart conducted by the Center of Environmental Research and Technology, Inc. on the Canadian Radon Program. As you can see, this is a 2% chance of risk for a non-smoker to get lung cancer if they are exposed to over 200 becquerel per cubic meters in their lifetime. This means it is only 1% more than exposure to radon at low outdoor levels. So in a sense, if you are prone to lung cancer, there's nowhere to hide. So I've conducted a test of 100 serviced and sealed vintage watches with radium luminous paste on their dials and hands in a room size no larger than 100 square feet, which is really small. The radon reading is under 20 BQ per cubic meter without the watches. In a week of reading with the watches, the result is between 35 to 90 BQ per cubic meters averaging each day. And according to the Canadian standard, below 200 BQ per cubic meter is considered safe. Not to mention that the Geiger reading on 100 timepieces is eye-popping. So, if you're going to own one watch with radium substances, your Wi-Fi connection in your house is probably much more dangerous than the watch on your wrist. The other thing I picked up during my research is that throughout the 1950s, the luminous radium pace on a watch was less pure than those from the early 1900s. My recommendation is if you're going to buy a watch with radium luminescent, it is best to buy one after the 1950s if you are afraid. Otherwise, I would say any radium luminescent watch after the late 1930s will be safe to own. And probably best to look for one with a gasket required case back for better sealing. This is why any timepiece I offer must be adequately clean and sealed. I will never sell a watch with an old gasket or wrong size crystal, and you will never see any radium particle floating around under the crystal either. I know some of you may think I am trying to promote my products, but let's be honest, as a watchmaker, this is part of my job to restore a watch properly. And I am the one taking all the risks, opening up the watch while my clients receive a watch that is safe to wear. That said, the many watchmakers that I know of are retired and still in good health. And these guys have worked on plenty of radium watches throughout their work life. Let's be honest, from the sources where many of you have learned about the danger of radium watches, the content creator or blogger is most likely a modern watch collector or a modern watch promoter or a modern watch dealer. Because the vintage watch market has exploded this past decade, the only thing left to control this is to pull the radium card. It works a bit, but long-time watch collectors are too savvy or smart for such a scare. I've not seen a good vintage watch collection without a single piece of radium luminescent timepiece. In conclusion, this has been a controversial topic to discuss whenever it comes up. My answer is that radioactive watches are not a health risk as long as they are intact and in good condition. So enjoy what you like and believe in what you believe. But after watching this video, I hope you understand this topic better. Once again, I myself and all these other content creator or blogger are no nuclear scientists. But one thing for sure is that I have put effort into conducting these tests. At the end of the day, it is all up to you. So buy what you like. Thank you everyone for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Please feel free to share it with your watch buddy and give it a thumbs up if you find this video helpful. If you enjoy watch related content, maybe consider subscribing to this channel as well. Hope you have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you in the following video.